think I've got the rail driver working with the advanced version. We shall see. Have I ever seen Unstoppable? Of course I've seen Unstoppable. <laughs> Alright, let's poke that up. Okay, so I didn't get the reverse, the uh, AWS working. Never mind. That's working. Let's get some brakes on. Yep, brakes are on. And uh, we need that one. And we want that one. Let's get the lights on. This is a real stunner of a loco, isn't it? Oops, F3 head again. I should drive with a steam controller at some point. But uh, it's in my bag. Now, you know what, Amtrak? You have to watch films like that. Um, with... Um, with a degree of just uh, watching them to be entertained. It's like every time I watch a film that's got hacking in it, it makes me cry a, slight, a lot, actually. Get the green to a minute. There's a train ahead of us in Bedford. Hey, Killer Cans, welcome, welcome. DS Killer Cans does train sim on his stream occasionally. Worth going and having a check out what uh, DS Killer Cans gets up to. So I sat and watched him streaming earlier on. He was doing some Western Lines of Scotland. That's very good. They don't stop at stations, though, Steve. <laughs> Harsh. <laughs> Alright, let's get moving. Cheers, later. See you later, Brody. So it's raining. We're here to enjoy the sounds. I only start to stop a facing when Matt fudges the install. Oh, come on! <laughs> oh, dear, dear. Yeah, Mr. Trainco. Hacking movies make me cry because I know what this, what, what I know what they're trying to say, and what they're doing usually don't even remotely match up. Thanks, Double Twelve. What is your route, by the way? What's the name of it? So I recognise the name. Uh, J W Blobman. The J W Blobman. Yes, the uh, AP did the uh, sounds for this logo. Careful because uh, I think that's my signal over there. Uh, Eighty four oh four seven. They have a another pack, but it doesn't contain this one. D three four five or four oh one four five, which are different. They've got AWS and other modern safety systems on them. Alright, we've got approach control. Oh, flashing. Oh, oh, that worked. Interesting. I 
Welcome Strat Shadow. Tyron, how many people work on Steam to get all these new scenarios? Uh, I can't remember how many people are on the scenario team. These ones weren't done by Dovetail, this is all done by Railright. Oh, it's a scenario on London Fabersham. Okay, Tubble 12. Alright, okay. That. I was slightly concerned because I didn't recognise any... Uh, um, I didn't recognise any routes that I was missing from the list. Yellow and a filter left. Ah, the AWS is working on my smacky button. So the scenarios I've been running tonight have all come off Steam Workshop, so they've been done by other people. Um, other u other end users of the game, other players. I don't really know much about vital statistics on the V class 40. It's bigger and heavier, essentially, BNSF which means it has more pulling power. Crossing over, gets us around this obstruction in front of us. Hopefully we'll get some green lights now. speed up. That's a nice AWS bell. Well, Tyron, I've got lots of YouTube videos teaching how to make scenarios. Have a go. Start with a free roam. And, uh, and then move on from there. Free roams are the easiest thing to start with. Oh, blue Pullman trains, baked bean kid. Yeah, they were, they were nice. Back on the green lights. Really, how will they confuse you? Because effectively, you just put lots of stop down and then put player drivers on them and then press go. You don't have to do anything. Uh, in terms of setting them up, you don't have to do anything with them at all. They're the easiest thing to create. What you do with them is uh, up to you. you. Kind of leave it up to the player to be creative. I know that um, there was someone on UK Train Sim a long time ago was making Blue Pullman. I don't know if we ever actually got it finished. Richard, someone or other, I can't remember his name, which is bad. Um, but uh, yeah, he was making it. He did the Five Bell for Train Sim as well. Yeah, Killer Cans, if you have a look at my YouTube tutorials, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's actually not too hard. JW Bob, the only four missing joint force to player to use a specific unit. Well, actually, if in a free roam, you should never set the player any instructions, ever. Now, none of the rolling stock on a free roam should be given instructions to move the train. Um, so the idea is that there are no paths set. The fundamental difference is that 
um, all of the tray, all of the soot points, even the automatic points, are, are switched to being manual points. Um, and the idea is that there is only you, and you can move around and do what you want. There's no AI trains to get in the way. The signalling shouldn't get in the way. That's fundamentally. I know you can give free roam trains AI instructions, but that's not what they're meant for. Um, that's um, there. So um, that's technically the diff. The main difference is that the uh, it should only really be you moving around. If you want AI trains, then you re that's a standard scenario. Um, there's timetable scenarios which are like standards, but you don't give the play. You can um, you're doing it all wrong and dislike it more. <laughs> Six miles an hour. RWB, RWB, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. Ride car, the thing with free roams, where I like free roams, is particularly if you've got like a smaller branch line type route, um, then you can um, you can put some stock down in various bits of the route. It becomes more like a model railway. You can put some bits of wagons down, put some coaches down, put a few trains down, locos down. And then when you actually go into the free roam, you can decide, I'm going to take that train and I'm going to move it over here and then when you get there you think actually now I think I will do this and you can make it up as you go it's a bit it's much more like running up you know, doing the model railway thing whereas with a standard scenario you have to sort of think about it um, you have to think about what you're doing in advance and create a single structured um, episode uh, not an episode a, uh, a single structured story um, which is, and they're both good. I'm not saying one is better than the other. Free roam is uh, is actually I I really like some free roams uh, occasionally when I want, particularly on the little branch lines where you want to move up and down. You just decide I want to pick up those wagons now and I want to shunt those wagons and I want to run around these coaches, and you sort of got a lot more freedom to just do whatever you want. Um, so timetable scenarios uh, they they're sort of a very strange thing. They're intended to be something else, um, but they. Um, Essentially, what they end up being is a standard scenario where you don't tick the player uh, the player checkbox, um, and that what that means is that all the trains are AI, and then the player just picks the one they want to drive by clicking on it, and they can take it over and complete the service and sort the service on it. Tell you what, the brakes on this um, 40 seem to work all right, Steve. <laughs> uh, one thing I would caution about timetable scenarios, um, Ed, is they can't be uploaded to Workshop. But otherwise than that, I don't think there's anything uh, wrong with them. Would scenario scripts mess up? I'm, I'm, to be honest, essentially what you're doing when you use a timetable scenario is you're using something which isn't actually, you know, it wasn't ever fully implemented. So you sort of, you drive off a cliff with a timetable scenario. Um, and um, who knows what will work, to be honest. It's, um, I'm surprised they weren't taken out of the game before release, but it is in the original rail simulator. But they're there, and people. Some people have made scenarios. There aren't a lot of people made scenarios, um, but because of the problems timetable scenarios can cause, that's why they're not uh, recommended. Yeah, Chris, that, that, that's essentially the. Uh, yeah.
319 is overtaking me. Come back! Yeah, pretty much, JW Blobman, it's very much a your mileage may vary. If it doesn't work, it probably will never work. Um, and don't be surprised. If it does work, then hooray! <laughs> right, we've slowed down too much, so let's uh, speed back up. We're going by a Flidic, which is just coming up there. Oh yeah, if you're starting a journey of learning the creative tools, Twarog, I would not start with making a route. Making a route is hard work. People don't really appreciate how hard it is. <laughs> Chicago Railfan, we are driving the Class 40 uh, D345, the new 40145 pack, um, and we're on the Midland Mainline route. Amtrak, I think it's because inherently there are a lot of instabilities with timetable scenarios where they can have a lot of problems and um, they're just not recommended to be used in the first place. Although I don't know if there are other technical reasons, but um, there's certainly that's one of the reasons. It's a lovely loco, isn't it? This Class 40, absolutely beautiful. Oh, well, we've arrived here on early, or at least on time. I didn't see exactly. All right, we've catch up, caught up with the one in front. I was going to say catched, but I managed to stop myself. Stop cheating and turn the I have no idea what's going on on this route. I really do not know this route, so I would not have a clue what I was doing. So no, I'm not cheating. Had staying on. I wouldn't have a clue what I was doing. It's green again. That would indicate that you ever have a clue you're doing. Oh, harsh words. As long as you know where you're supposed to stop. Yes. <laughs> I think we're stopping one place along the way. Oh, no, we're not. Oh, no, we are. Limberry Road up slow. I haven't got a clue where that is. Cheers, Monty. Problem is, I, I use all of the routes in the game, and all, a load of workshop routes, so I never really actually learn any of the routes, so the HUD is, uh, the HUD is taking up most of the screen. Really? <laughs> you know what? I've got a solution for you. I've got the solution for you. It looks like this. There you go. Is that better? See, no hard now. Prove it. <clears throat> I might leave it like that, actually, and adjust the screen a bit, because I look all professional. You can't really tell. 
<laughs> I've got the window open as windows open. Well, graphics card, this is a GeForce GTX 760 Ti. Little waggly bits are tiny. These things here, these are, they, so they've got the um, various outputs from the game, like speedometer, ammeter, brake gauges, AWS, more brake gauges, more brake gauges. Uh, these are like lights. Now, if you look up SciTech flight instrument panels, uh, Twarog, this machine doesn't have a 970. My 970 is at work. When I'm able to bring the work home machine home, it's got a 970, and the gaming laptop has a 970, but that's off doing other things still. So I'm using another machine which has got a 760 in it. Did I get some of those small screens yet from your contact? Um, no, I'll, I'll, I think to be honest until I can release the software and actually demonstrate that it works with the game I'd feel a bit cheeky asking them for some more hardware. <laughs> put the HUD on a different screen. No, you can't snap the HUD off, unfortunately. The screens fall off the back of a truck. No, the screens, um, um, Cytec sent them to me so I could do a test integration with the game and see whether it would work. And clearly it does, beautifully. The turkey says gobble. Thanks for the follow, much appreciated. GTX 960 should be more than good enough, double 12. No, my contact at SciTech is one of their lead designers, the guy who designs most of their joysticks and this hardware and... Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yes, I should be able to do that. In fact, I've already done it. I should have given that to you now. I've already got it to where I can snap gauges. I can pull a gauge out and snap it off. That works fine. I haven't got one to where you can set up things like three, um, three by one or that sort of thing. I've got a bit of tidying up on it, but you can pull one by one gauges out individually, and uh, that works beautifully. JW Blobman, uh, most of the HUD information is down here, which is fine, but I'm missing the map and the next instruction. Now, if, if I can learn a route, then I can do without it. It's, um, but if I can't, until I can learn a route, I need that information. I'm thinking that I might make the effort and just stick to one, um, stick to one route for a while. Maybe not on the stream, but um, and just try and just focus on learning one route, um, so that I can drive that route without the HUD. It got an MSDS to where, with, with the routes I played, you know, on my own, I could drive those without any of the track monitor or anything loaded. But I just, I just do too many. No, you can't intercept the upcoming route information. It's not, I, when I did the um, track the rail driver uh, interface, um, I couldn't get that information out. But it's there, but I couldn't get it. Uh, I couldn't find a way of getting it out, not in the time frame I had to do, to look at it anyway. Which was quite limited. Uh, 
Dub AUT, yeah, there is a document. If you look up on um, enginedriver.com, uh, look for my article. In fact, it pops up on here sometimes about my console, this thing. Um, on the bottom of that article, there is a link to the documentation about the rail driver interface. Essentially, it's all about the loco. So you can pull it, you can read everything about the loco, and you can write everything, change anything you can change on the loco. But there's nothing about the journey as such. Right, we're coming up to Limbury, which is our first station. I know the Seven Valley Railway off by heart. That's about as much as I go. <laughs> it got to where I had played hundreds and hundreds of hours doing all the scenarios for the official pack and doing all the scenarios for the diesel gala. That, uh, um, yeah, I knew that route like the back of my hand. Coming up on a red, we need to stop here at Limbury. Damien Mena 2K, thank you for the follow, much appreciated. Trent Valley would make a good route to start route learning, I think, because it's it's a relatively um, easy, like easily understood route. It's a sort of a string, essentially. The one I want to learn is um, Riviera in the 50s uh, and London Brighton. Right, we just have to wait for permission to leave here now. Hello driver, press tab to receive the signal to enter Luton Limbury Road sidings. Tab. Right. Yeah, I know PTG's done several London Bright videos. Uh, I mean the way that I'm gonna have to do it, I just the way I have to learn everything is just to do it. Um, so the uh, it would just be a question of running scenarios up and down and up and down and up and down the line, and uh, eventually it'll just sink in. Got a 15 limit coming up. We're going through Limbury Road siding one. The Isle of Wight. <laughs> I know. That. I must admit, I do know the Isle of Wight. <laughs> Captain Cripple, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Where is your hometown, Killer Cans? Because there is um, the um, Portsmouth Direct Line from. Um, uh, oh, I can't remember. Portsmouth to um, that W place. That W place. <laughs> Shows you how much I know these days. Oh, hello. I'm getting trolled here. A minute ago, that was a green or a white. 
Hello driver, press tab to receive the next signal to exit Luton Limbury sidings. Uh, Castle Douglas signalman's followed me. Woking, that's the one butter mister, Woking. I'd have remembered Waterloo, but for some reason Woking just vanished. Oh, I knew. I see what you mean, Killer Can. So, what, heading towards Basingstoke on the sort of Waterloo Basingstoke line. Right, we'll get up to uh, ninety and uh, fifteen in a minute. Okay, sorry, we'll get up to ninety. In a minute. restriction up ahead. Single yellow. There you go, butter mister, that was the horn. Going via Luton platform one. It looks like home out of Luton is clo is uh, on. Can I play Trains New Era Nuclear Mind? No, I won't be playing Trains New Era. I work for the company that make this sim. I might get in trouble if I play to the competitor's train sim. <laughs> Cheers, Volts Gaming. Hello driver, press tab to receive the signal into Luton Crescent Road sidings. GWR verifying just checks to make sure you've got what you've got. Uh, and then if anything is wrong it fixes it. It doesn't change anything at all. Right, signal of danger approved. Obviously if you've modified any content um, then it will get restored back to the default. Just focus on how bad it is. What do you mean, JW Blobman? Uh, 
840470 really isn't that simple. <laughs> Just focus on one. Try how bad trains is, yeah. Well, I'm not going to say anything about trains. I used to play it a lot. In fact, I was part of the beta team for it until Trains 2004. You'll find me in the credits, even. But I was more interested in Microsoft Train Simulator, to be honest. What I really liked about Trains back in the day was this uh, was game script and the functionality you could get out of the scripting system was very, very good. Yeah, taking some interesting detours on this scenario, aren't we? But it did promise us that we'd be taking some interesting detours. Cities in Motion 2? Yeah, I've got Cities in Motion 2. Wipers on this look are really good, Buttermister. They're very, very good indeed. What I quite like is if you stop the wiper, it just stays in wherever you leave it, and then you have to press it again to put it back to the um, bottom again. It's very cool. It's just a simple little touch. Green lights. Time to go. Harpenden, 4.8 is a go via. Transport Tycoon and Locomotion, yeah, when I was at university I whiled away many, 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 many hours on those games. And then when I worked out in, um, I had to live out in Sydney for two and a half months and uh, I had basically nothing to do of an evening. And um, and so uh, I went through locomotion all over again. <laughs> uh, being a Seth, the M8 scenario is El Faba. Butter Mister, this loco is on Steam. It's the new BR Class 40 40145. If you just search for 40145, it'll come up. Green light. Thanks, Capitan Cripple. Appreciate that. No, it's not. It's DTG. What do you mean, Nexi? I don't know what you mean. see the whole train. Let me just see what the uh, next signal looks. Green, that's good. Half a mile to the next signal. Should have sight of it any minute now. Oops, too much. Another green.
green one, that's good. Sorry, yes, Axie, it's a DTG scenario, you're right, it is. Sorry, yes. Bob, now that the 40 is out, I'm hoping the keys will be uh, uh, with me t next week. Traction Depot is making London Norwich, oh, that'll be good, I'm sure. Come by Harpenden, got another green light. There you go, Steve says they can take up to 28 days to come in. That explains that. Steve's in charge of codes. Sure, send it over, JW Blobman, but don't uh, send it in a Twitch message. Don't send it on the chat, otherwise I shouldn't probably lose it. Yeah, as Moggy says, one of the really great things about getting Class 40 on Steam is that it means you should start seeing scenarios on workshop which I'm sure I should be looking forward to that's correct Bob, you'll get it through Twitch message Right, we're going via Harpenden now. Let's uh, go to Harpenden, shall we, and uh, veg out. Oh, we're late. like a renumberable. I have no idea GWR, I've not actually tried playing with that. BNSF, DPS has already published several Class 40 scenarios. Awesome! DPS scenarios are good. Cheers GWR, see you later. Welcome back Capitan Cripple. Speed limit's now 90. We're two, min two and a half minutes behind schedule. I'm slipping further and further behind. Greenness. I think those lights are just jealous of the train I'm driving. <laughs> How do I make the game move well like this? It's a thing called track IR, as uh, Amarillan just met, just said. If you go to naturalpoint.com or, or Google track IR, it's this little antenna that's sticking on the top here. It's got LEDs in it. And then there is a little webcam type thing on the top of the screen next to my normal webcam uh, that's watching it and then just tracking where my head is so I can move around up and down, forwards and backwards as well as sideways. Apologies if that made anyone sick. <laughs> Uh, 
80 limit coming up, St Albans 1.4 miles, we're already a minute 10 late. My wife's technical description for this is Matt's antenna thing. Drop the speed to 65 for St Albans. It's well worth it, Butter Mister. It's a really awesome bit of kit. I'm using Track IR5, but you can still pick up Track IR4 sometimes, um, and they'll do the job. Um, they're just not quite as um, high frame rate, but they certainly do the job well enough. There's two. There's one that uses this. There's another one which has like a baseball cap thing, which that works just as well. You just have to wear a baseball cap. Cheers, BK. See you later. Oh, those need reskins. <laughs> oh, we only got 102 penalty. We actually we're getting less behind than we were at the last station. we got in the way of timetabled instructions. But no timetabled instructions according to that, so that's as much score as I'm going to get. Borns! Uh, JW Blobman, again, if it's not been announced by the company I can't talk about it, I'm afraid. If you get a Track IR5 button mister, it actually comes with both. It comes with a clip to put on your baseball cap and it comes with the thing for your headset. The nice thing about the baseball cap is if you don't want to wear a headset. Because um, if, if, if you've got this thing and you don't want to wear a headset, you sort of... The only other thing you can do is try a... a uh, wear a hairband or something. <laughs> I don't know where my hairband has gone. My yellow one's gone. Where did I put it? Oh, I think I'll put it away. I'm um, being on the racetrack on Tuesday. Can you drop me a Twitch message, Agseek, and I will uh, have a look at that. BNSF, I think we're going to... Oops. Bradley. Let's put the camera back. Oh, no. That's it, take that off, now put that back. Now I can see what I'm doing. Moggy's back with a mini twister. Fabulous. The other thing, Butter Mister, is if you have a look, I've done a video on Track IR and how it works. Uh, if you take a look at that, you can uh, you can see um, you can see all the hardware because I show it on the screen, and then show how it works, how it integrates with the game. Cheers, Capitan. We've got a green light. No, we've got a red light.
I did contact Trakar, and one of the problems is that because they're they're in America, um, it's significantly more expensive to. Um, let me go and press tab. It's significantly more expensive to sh get them to ship it across to the UK than it is for you to just find a UK reseller. So the discount really doesn't work that well. It kind of works a bit because it's only I think it was only a few percent. It wasn't a fa fabulous discount. Um, so uh, yeah, what I was going to try, what I what I was trying to do at the time, and I've completely forgot to do anything else with it, was to actually find a US reseller and a UK reseller and get see if I can arrange some discounts in local territories. So that you could take advantage of them more easily. All right, coming up to a 15 limit. Don't want to lose any more score. That's for certain. Right, we're going via Harper Lane Hopper. I'm not believing what I'm seeing here. Hello driver, you must do one loop of the stone terminal before stopping at Radlett Lane Road Stone Run Round. Please make sure to change the points ahead of you so you continue around the loop. Exactly, we're doing hard oh, there. We then stop here, then we drop off all those, and then we run round effectively round the loop. Oh, I see! Very clever. They're using the circuit to actually run round the train. So the idea is we run round and then back to here. Then we run the loco round, a couple up, and then we can take the coaches out that way for the next scenario. Reverse the train. Harper Lane Hopper, which is that one. It's an actual run round loop, yeah. <laughs> Please change the next set of points so they're set correctly. These are Western Region. BR Western Region, Mark 1's Moggy, yeah. Thanks, JW Blobman. I'll look at that later. Can you change the head code board? Uh, I have no idea, Butter Mister. This is the first time I've ever, ever used this loco, so I've not really had a chance to do anything with it yet. Okay, Ajax says the head code is fully changeable. Super. Wow, midnight, we've still got 108 people watching. Fantastic. Night, Soldier K. Right, so we stop here.
<laughs> I'll wait tomorrow Saturday. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> it's not midnight everywhere. Well, this is true. Midnight for me, though. We normally tank under the 100 by now. Right, you must now run around in preparation for returning back north. So I first of all uncouple from the train. I've got this plugged in, so I've got to do it that way. Right, well done. Now go around the loop and couple the other end of the train. Guards Manash, thank you for the follow. Much appreciated. Cheers, Twarog, mate. See you later. Cheers, Ron. Thanks for joining. Now everyone's running away. <laughs> now we're running around and we're going to couple up to the other side of the consist. Dealer cans, yeah, I've done that so many times. It's um, it's slightly worrying, leaving handbrakes on wagons. In fact, I did it just recently. I, I parked a set of um, I parked part of my train, put handbrake on, ran round it, and then started going the other way. And uh, I was wondering why it was going a bit slow. <laughs> right, that's the other side of the train to get coupled up to. That's the first part of the scenario finished. If you wish to drive back to Bedford, load the second part. Not tonight. Right, that was class 40. I got a bronze. I'm going to go with a bronze. That's not bad. Superb! That was excellent. That's a really, really nice loco. That's class 40, which has just been, uh, just been released. Right. Um, right, one more to do. Let's get that going. Good night, Steve. <laughs> 